G'day everyone and welcome to my coverage of the Epping Model Railway Club's Great Train Show which was held on the 6th and 7th of May at the Rose Hill Gardens Grand Pavilion in Sydney. Exhibition reports and other videos on this channel are made possible by the Patreons on Patreon. Our Cooler by Paul Chisholm Arcoola is a fictional New South Wales country town of the 1950 and 1960s era, when the railways were in the interesting transition from steam to diesel, and from four-wheel rolling stock to more modern bogey vehicles. As a result, a wide variety of trains can be seen passing through the town and sometimes pausing to shunt a wagon or two into the goods sheds or the milk factory. Our cooler is built to a scale of 7mm, which is O scale, which is twice the size of HO. The layout is 16 metres long and the layout is DCC cordless in operation with background sound effects which you can hear. Almost everything on this layout, from the buildings to the locomotives and to the rolling stock, are either scratch or kit built. A cooler is one of the most impressive layouts on the exhibition circuit and one that I highly recommend seeing if you get the opportunity. We will shoot something for this one, we'll be going to slot it in, but it'll probably be either before or after. We can either do it tomorrow morning for this crowd in here, or we can do it tonight.
HO scale layout, the yard. The yard was designed and built by Alistair McMaster, with assistance from his brother Colin and also his friend Mark. The yard is a fictional but prototypical New South Wales country layout in HO scale that represents through branch line and with associated sidings. The yard features DCC operation with tortoise point motors and KD electromagnetic uncouplers. It's set in the era of the late 1960s to the mid 1990s with an array of locomotives and rolling stock from those eras. The locos are all DCC with the majority being sound fitted. Seventy three class diesels and X two hundred rail tractors carry out the majority of the shunting operations, whilst thirty T and thirty two class steam locomotives, as well as class forty seven and class forty eight diesels, operate on the branch. Branch passenger activities are all handled by CPH and six twenty class rail motors. Easily my favourite layout at the exhibition was Coromel Colliery Incline, which is an O-scale New South Wales narrow and standard gauge railway. This model displays the operation of a two foot gauge, self-acting, continuous rope incline and mine tramway used at the Coromel Colliery near Wollongong from 1906 to 1955. The model from transports real coal from the underground at the mine to the incline top and down the incline. The model period is set between 1924 and 1928. The steepest grade on the incline is approximately 1 in 4, which is 25%. Gravity provided the power for the real skips on the incline, with 22 individual loaded skips heading downhill. There was enough surplus energy to return the empty skips uphill and bring all the supplies from the mine uphill to the incline top. At the foot of the model incline, the loaded coal skips are automatically tipped and returned to the lower level at the tipple of their journey back uphill. The screens building and the standing gauge tracks are a close representation of the actual track layout near the colliery. Both tipple and screen models of the building are based on historic photos. At the top of the incline, the layout also shows the brake horse and water tank area. 
The two foot gauge steam hauled tramway that ran between the mine and the incline along the Illawarra Escarpment oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. is modelled with the colliery and the buildings as present in the mid 1920s. The large mine workshop and powerhouse buildings are displayed as sectional buildings to display other activities supporting the coal mine process underground. Once again, this is probably one of the most interesting and well-presented layouts that I think I've ever seen, and one of the absolute standouts of this exhibition. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Blowfly Bend from Daniel Thompson and Family, which is an OM30 Australian layout. This freelance layout measures 1800mm by 1200mm, and the scenic portion only measures 900mm by 450 and it was built for an end-of-year oh, club fantastic. diorama competition. The Australian bush scene that they have constructed was inspired by the brilliant modelling of Jeff Knott. Once again, another fantastic micro layout from the Thompsons. Yeah. Darling Harbour by Garth Wiseman. The Darling Harbour goods line from Sydney began in 1855, the opening of the Sydney to Parramatta Railway as a branch line from Sydney Central Station. By 1963, the yard had grown to be 56 acres in size, with 30 miles of track and more than 18,000 trains a year. The Darling Harbour layout is a representation of the western side of the complex from the Ultimo Road to the Darling Harbour Island Wharves at Piedmont Bay. At the peak of operation at around 1970 through to the closure of the yard in 1984. The layout includes structures of that period, some of which still exist such as the Ultimo Power Station, now the Powerhouse Museum and the Australian Mercantile Building, 
which was burnt down in 1992, and the Goldsboro Mort building, as well as the double stack goods shed, which is now at hotel site, and the Piemont Power Station, which is now Star Casino, and of course the shipping wharves. This was the first time that this layout has ever been exhibited. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Oh, mate. <laughs> I'll let him know. I don't know how far I found. No, very good. No, it's always a good, always a good show. Like, it's, they nail it. Yeah.
Maribara from the Amra Victoria branch. This large display was constructed by members of the Victorian branch of the Australian Model Railway Association, with some assistance from other modellers. The location represents Maribara as it was post World War II until 1967. The location represents Maribara as it was post World War II until 1967. The rolling stock represents the year 1962, when the steam was still in operation but was in the process of being replaced by early Victorian railways diesels. The central part of the display includes the station building, which is to scale, and there have been some compression at both ends just to save some space. All the buildings are scratch built from plans from measuring the prototype, or from scaling from photographs. The backdrop was compiled from a series of photographs of the actual houses and put together in Photoshop, with modern features removed to backdate the appearance to the early 1960s. Just 37. HO scale layout, Mungo Scots by the Sydney Model Railway Society. Mungo Scots is based on a small section of the former Metropolitan Goods Line, which was running from Dulwich Hill to Roselle in the inner western Sydney. The section model documents the Mungo Scots flour mills at Summer Hill, which ceased operating in 2009, as well as the general goods yard opposite serving several industries, including sanitarium and Lewisham Iceworks. Mungo Scott's opened in 1916, was expanded in 1955 with the construction of four large silos, which can easily be seen by passing passengers. The entire line underwent significant change when electrification occurred in 1967. 
This layout was constructed by members of the Sydney Model Railway Society, and they are proudly the oldest model railway club in Australia, established in 1936. Where are you going? Ah, oh, always good. Got a train show. Cockle Creek from the New South Wales N-Scale Group. Situated on the short north between Sydney and Newcastle, Cockle Creek feeds into the northern end of Lake Macquarie. When the main line was realigned in 1957, a twin span through truss replaced an earlier plate girder bridge, which remained there until 1982, to carry coal traffic from the northern Rhonda to the Stockton Borehole Collieries. It was once a major interchange point between ferries that piled Lake Macquarie, steam trams between Sears Point and, and Wallsend, and trains to Newcastle. The diorama represents the locality between the 1960s and 1980s, and has been constructed with some members of the New South Wales N Scale Group. Bridges are heavily modified kits, whilst bridge supports and buildings are all scratch built. Landforms are made from sculpted foam plastics and scenic with a variety of techniques and natural and man-made materials. On the main, steam and diesel haul local intercity passenger trains, which will share the tracks with all manner of freight and of course coal trains. Yeah, nah, Aubrey got in first. <laughs> 
Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, thank you. No, no, you're not at all. No, no, thank you. You're all good, mate. You're all good. No, thank you so much. No, 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 appreciate it. Too Long by the Hills Model Railway Society. Originally, this layout was based on the Wyom Railway Station and local historic rail yards. Although now, with a laser-cut timber model of Tenterfield Railway Station sitting centrally on the north-south rail main lines. Yeah. Configured by computerised operation with integrated central traffic control modules for all track point changes, including the locomotive yard's turntable. Too Long is from the Hills Model Railway yeah, Society, right, yeah. located in Balkan Hills, New South Wales. Mornington. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, I'm just, yeah. I've been out for about training. Oh, right, right. Recruits is where you put them there. Ah, right. I'll bet. Where were you based? Okay. Oh, right. Training and blogging now. See, you haven't joined the Wagga Club, have you?
Shit. Oh, you're going back to Australia. Ah, oh, right. Ah, of course, of course. Good, thank you. So this is this is a bit of a different one. No, this isn't an alpha, this is an FX. Waterfall by the Illawarra Model Railway oh, Association. Yeah. Waterfall Station is 38 kilometres south of Sydney Central Station, on the outskirts of the metropolitan area on the Illawarra Line. This exhibition layout is a representation of Waterfall Station Yard in the 1960s. The station building as modelled was demolished in 1995. The Sydney Suburban Electrication Network did not reach Waterfall until 1980. All of the structures and buildings on this layer are scratch built from original plans and photographs. The layout can be operated using either DC or DCC with the track and turnouts being Pico Code 83.
Dinghy by Daniel Dooley. Dinghy Station on the Pangal Line in Victoria was opened in June 1883. To this day, it is the least used station in Victoria, recording only 250 passengers in 2021. The name comes from the Aboriginal word meaning star. The layout is based in the early 1960s and 1970s, and has been a bit of an on and off project for a couple of years. The station buildings are built from styrene while other buildings are kits. As well as that, the locomotives and rolling stock are also largely kits. Gunblower and Gunner Do by Rob Pavlovsky. Gunblower is located north of Melbourne in rural Victoria. The main focus on constructing this layout was to use 3D technology, with all the items on this layout being 3D drawn, printed, and then cast in resin, from the locomotives to rolling stocks, buildings, and structures. The track work used is a layout combination of Tomex and Cardo Uni track and the layer is DCC operated. Gunnadu is based on a fictitious town in rural Victoria. Most of the building's instructions are also 3D designed, with other structures that are scratch built. I'm 
Rob, what are the lights you used in these? The top. Bunning lights. What are they? Bunning. Bunnings? Oh, well, there's a panel light? Yeah. They're around 60 bucks, man. Yeah, no yeah. shit. They're bloody awesome, dude. Ashford Majindi, modelling with Rowan Ferguson. The canyon section of Ashford and the bridge section of Majindi, which transitions to the northern tableland section of the layout, were displayed by Rowan. The exhibition sections that were on display are small sections of a much larger home layout. Rowan models New South Wales railways from 1980 to 1984. And these sections have been exhibited to demonstrate layout construction and techniques using lightweight steel framing and styrofoam construction. It shows the steps and the procedures that are able to reach a finished layout. The Fraser River Gorge is the entry point to the Ashford Rail Yard and the Barwon River Scene is the large entry point to the Maninji Yard. This will also transition point back to the northern tablelands and the Bolivia section. Frankly, I can't wait to see what's next. The Newlands Layout by Chris's Central Station. Newlands is a abandoned kerosene shea mining town from about 1900 to 1920. At its height, about 10,000 people lived there. The New South Wales Government Railways connected Nunes to the main West Railway Line via an impressive gorge, tunnels and an undercliff railway. The railway line fell about 1,500 feet in about 30 miles. This display layout attempts to capture many elements of Nunes and its railway line. Deep gorges, railway lines under cliffs and a representation of Nunes itself designed for children to see and to get a real feel of trains going through gorges and under cliffs via specialised viewing niches. Newlands is a forgotten part of New South Wales history. Bine along by the Epping Model Railway Club. This layout depicts railway operations on the Main South Line in New South Wales in the region of Bine along and the Illinong Creek, when the station at Bine along was still in use and all the yard tracks were still intact. 
Most of the structures on Binalong still remain, although no longer in use, and the bridge at Illinon Creek still exists. The trains featured on this layout belong to members of the Diesel Era Modelers. The trains featured on this layout belong to members of the Diesel Era Modelers group, operating the layout and cover the time period of late steam to present day. Ah, oh, right. What were they called? Are they still around? Brickslandia from the Sydney Lego Users Group. This layout showcases what can be achieved with Lego in Australia with custom built Lego trains. Featuring some iconic locomotives from Victoria, New South Wales, and even overseas. Upway Wishing Well Halt. Upway Wishing Well Halt was a railway station at Bincombe in the county of Dorset in England. So where, where is it set in between? Like... It served the northern part of the village of Upway, now a suburb of Weymouth, on the now known as the heart of the Wessex Line and the southwestern main line, operated by GWR in 1905. Operating local Weymouth to Dorchester rail motor trains, the station had a GWR pagoda shelters and wooden platforms. The platforms were later replaced with brick-built structures, but the pagodas remained until road completion saw the closure of the halts in 1957.
Marungal, located in the rural region of New South Wales. The town sits on the oh, main right. south yeah. rail corridor. Oh, nice. They have all the usual amenities you'd find in a small town. A pub, a takeaway, a service station and more. The trains running are representations of the 1980s SRA of New South Wales, with the occasional rip in the time-space continuum, and we see a train from an era when things were simpler. The layout is HO scale and is privately owned, and is controlled by an NCE SB3A, with a Raspberry Pi that allows them to drive the trains with mobile phones. Goulburn by the Guildford Model Railway Group. Goulburn is a HO scale exhibition layout constructed and operated by the Guildford Model Railway Group. The layout is based on the Goulburn Railway Station and its immediate precinct, which is located on the main South Railway Line, 225 kilometres from Sydney by rail. The layout features many important items in the area and is modelled to represent the area circa mid-1980s. The trains being run are typical of those that ran through Goulburn from the steam era through to the start of the candy colour scheme era. The framework is plywood, resting on aluminium A-frame legs. 
The layout is operated by conventional DC block control and a separate controller for each of the up and down mainline tracks provided for continuous operation of the double track mainline. And of course there is a third for the sidings. Goulburn also features a 14 track storage yard at the rear providing ample storage for many different trains. Good, good. Yeah, it's a weekend thing for you guys. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I know what they did in terms of dollars. They could they couldn't tell me that. No, no, no. Yeah, no, yeah. You'll have it for next year. Yeah. Totally. Good, good, good.
Yeah. yeah. Swanvale by the New England Mod Railway Club. Swanvale is located approximately midway between the towns of Grinville and Glen Innes in the New South Wales Northern Tablelands. The land depicts what Swanvale may have looked like if the New South Wales government had constructed the proposed line from Innervale to Grafton on the north coast.
Gresham by the Sydney Enscale Model Railway Club. Gresham is located on the main Western Railway line, west of Bathurst. The layout is based on the hamlet that existed on the 19th of May 1982. The trains operating on this layout consist of both ready-to-run and kit-built locomotives, as well as rolling stock from the same sources. The track is Pico Code 55 on the visible section, with Tomex Code 80 in storage yards. The layout is operated using DCC, and all signals, which are made by DAPOL, and points are powered. Buildings are a mix of kit-built and scratch-built structures. All the trees are scratch-built using the twisted wire process. The Sydney N-Scale Model Railway Club operates a number of layouts at their club rooms in Rockdale. This includes North American, Australian, British and Canadian. So if you are interested, check out their website. Oh, I agree, I agree. No, it, it's, it's, it is 
definitely the premium like it too much the break of, yeah. of the year. Yeah, it was a pleasure to come too. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. And then um, Newcastle also worked on for the light rail and the, the other things. And then Goldberg. In full independent, like, going in on it. Like, that's great. Like, more of that. Yeah, good. Good. Not wrong. I mean, uh, not like that hasn't happened before. Mm. So you're getting quite a number of messages like, "Oh, do this next, do this next." Oh, I know, I know how that feels. Oh, my, my answer, like my last couple of answers, I mean, like dead set. You, you want it? Invest in it. Like you want to come to, on the table? I will cut you with money. I will give you. Like you want to do that? And they're like, oh. Newcastle, 1899. The construction of this layout started in May 2012 and has been an 11 year project so far. With many trips being taken to this city, gaining more and more measurements, photographs, and an abundance of research. Due to the era and scale of which this layout has been modeled in, nothing was commercially available. Everything therefore had to be scratch built. All the buildings, structures, railway carriages, turntables, and horse-drawn vehicles. Newcastle 1899 is still one of the best layouts I think that I've ever seen, and it's one that I highly suggest if you get the chance, go and see it.
A layout that is honestly one of my favorites, Carlingford in HO scale. Carlingford is a small point-to-point -point HO scale layout set in the 1980s to the early 1990s. Inspiration for this layout was sparked when the one-to-one -one scale Carlingford line in Sydney was closed permanently in preparation to be converted to light rail. The era was chosen due to the interest regarding operations and the yard that was still present beyond the station until the mid to late 1990s. On the Carlingford layout, a variety of rolling stock can be seen travelling up and down the line. However, it is heavily centred around the older style single and double deck suburban trains that so many people remember. As you view the layout, you let the trains and the details take you back to the late 80s and early 90s remembering a piece of history that unfortunately is no longer around. Uh, yes, it is not <laughs> <laughs> This seems to be the easiest to follow. Oh, cool. Got it. Blue Mountains in HO scale. Blue Mountains made its debut at the 2018 Forestville exhibition. And this year, they were exhibiting their layout 
with an expanded form with the completion of Katoomba, which was added to the front side of the layout. The layout is based on the final years of steam operation and the start of diesel running from about 1950 to 1956. Whilst goods trains ran slowly, passenger trains operated smartly on the steep grades. Most westbound passenger trains required a bank engine. Star of Operations is the use of double-headed 57 and 58 class locos on 1500 ton coal trains. This layout is fully DCC operated including Wi-Fi enabled operation for smartphones via Raspberry Pi using JMRI. All points are DCC enabled such that route selection via DCC macros is incorporated. Members trains cover a range of passenger services such as the Central West Express with a rake of hub cars as well as the Cave Hills Express with a rake of end platform cars. Good services cover local mixed freight, wool and wheat trains to Sydney. As well as that, you can also see a very interesting geared locomotive running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Cheers. 
Tarana and Oberon by the Georges River Model Railway Club. Tarana is situated on the main western line 197 kilometers from Sydney and was the junction for the 24 kilometer branch to Oberon. The layout is modeled in N scale and represents the station after 1968, but before the change to a single track in the 1990s. The buildings on the layout are all scratch built from styrene except for the footbridge, which is a kit. The water tank is scratch built from code 55 rail and styrene. The back scene is painted by Val Bennett in oil paints and photographs of the station are taken in the 1990s. The Oberon extension to Tarana represents the branch line and the terminal station from the Oberon to Tarana railway line which opened for operations on the 3rd of October 1923. The layout is being built in support of the Oberon Tarana Heritage Railway Incorporated who are celebrating the centenary of the Oberon Tarana railway line over the 2023 September October long weekend. due to be completed for the 100th anniversary celebrations. The escarpment is still under development with trains operating over the full length of the exhibit. Once again, a layout to keep an eye on because it is still a work in progress. Germanden by the Markman Model of Sydney. The centrepiece of this layout is the Germanden Viaduct, an impressive two and a half kilometre long structure on the Würzburg-Fora high speed line. 
This line was the first high-speed line constructed in Germany and opened at the end of May 1988. The viaduct crosses the town as well as the River Main. Intercity express trains or the ICE trains ply this route and their way to Hanover, Berlin or Hamburg in one direction or Nuremberg and Munich in the other. They travel at 250 km per hour on these lines, however they are permitted to travel at 280 km per hour if they are running late. And the freight trains on this line are permitted to travel at 160. This layout is also constructed in Z gauge. Savoy is a fictional village somewhere between Exeter and Plymouth in the southwest of England. It is served by a branch line owned and operated by the Great Western Railway. It is depicted as it might have been in 1947. Passenger traffic features traditional Great Western branch line consists, such as auto trains, as well as busy summer holiday specials hauled by larger express locomotives. Regular freight trains include dairy traffic from the local farming community and deliveries to the local coal merchant. The baseboard consists of shelves painted and built up with foam, plaster bandage and plywood. The buildings are mostly ratio kits, and rolling stock is from a range of manufacturers, including Pico, Dapple, Graham Farish, and Union Mills. Liveries range from 1912 to 1947. On every motor railway, there has to be a bus on a bridge. Oh, yes. <laughs> came from I actually spent the last kind of three and a half years of my time in the UK in Plymouth, oh, yeah. in South Devon. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So this is based on the railway that I was a signalman on. Oh, really? Um, so loosely. So there we go, that was all the layouts. So let's have a look at some of the retailers. You had along the track models, Matt's Ballast, Kieran Ryan models, Palace Hobbies, Hobbyland, Andean models, Wombat models, MKN Digital, Magna Rail Moves, Lego and Cato Lake, Railway Coins, as well as the Scale Model Co. Barry's Boxes, Kerabi Models, Kazula Hobbies. There was also quite a large second-hand store, which was very popular on the Saturday morning. Ascision Models had quite a large stand there, as well as SDS. IDR Models, Berg's Hobbies, Eureka Models, Eurotrain Models, OnTrack Models, the Scale yeah, Workshops, gonna... and Berth tools. As well as that, you also had Train World, Iron Express Model Railway Shop, and many more. I believe I said it last year, I think I'm going to say it again, the Epping Model Railway Club easily put on one of Australia's best model railway shows, and I think that if you are going to attend any model railway show, or rather travel for one, I think this is the one to go for. It's extremely well presented, it's easy to get to, and frankly, it's one that I will always try and go back to every year.
This year was no exception and it was a fantastic exhibition to attend and honestly, I can't wait to be there again next year. If you went along to this exhibition, or perhaps you're planning to, or maybe you just really like some layouts in this video, of course, leave me some feedback or let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Anyway, I'll be back with plenty more videos and model railway Hello. exhibition coverage coming soon. So thank you all so much for watching this, well, rather long presentation. Anyway, see you all again soon. Hooroo!